everyone, welcome to Babies with Knives. Today we're going to be doing a character creation for a Maximum Apocalypse with creator Scott Alls above me. Hey Scott. How's it going? It's going great. How are you today? Good. Just got home from work. So let's make some characters. Awesome. Great way to relax in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm your hostess Alice Peng, aka Lala Twiddle, as always. And with me as always is my partner, Brandon Powers. Hey Brandon. Howdy howdy. So, for Maximum Apocalypse, it is a D100 percentile based system, and this is going to be a prototype character creation, so it's likely going to go through a few tweaks before the final release, but you'll get a good idea of how things are going to roll. To learn more about this game, go and check out our actual play, which I'll leave a link down in the description. So let's get started. Scott, cool. why don't you start us off? Okay. Well, when you go to create a character in Maximum Apocalypse, uh, the RPG, you're basically creating everything you want. You're customizing the character the way that you want to create. So it's a, a seven phase process. And there are some steps that go in each phase. Like phase one actually has six steps. Um, but for the most part, like they're pretty quick steps or they're the first part's the, the longest part, but we'll get into that. Uh, the, the very first thing that you do is first uh, you have to figure out your base stats because everything, as you guys know, everything's based off of a base stat. So the first thing you got to create, the first thing you want to create is your base. That's at least you know what your numbers are before you get involved in like your skills and your special abilities. Like everything revolves around those. So, uh, so the first step is to start off with uh, with your base stats. And if you're creating a character, a survivor character, then then you're going to be a human. So everyone starts with 25 in all nine of the base stats, which I believe are on the screen. But if you didn't know them, it's strength, fortitude, agility, intelligence, instinct, charisma, fighting skill, ballistic skill, and luck. Okay. Yeah. And you would recommend that we figure out our stats before we conceptualize what uh, what role we would be? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, basically the very first step is trying to figure out what kind of character you want to create. Do you want to, do you want to create a sneaky stabby or a shooty runny or like a techie buildy, right? Mm -hmm. That's sort of like your thought process. What do you want to create? Uh, because that'll determine what your first steps are for your archetypes. So I guess I forgot that step. That's step zero. Like, what do you want to make, right? Yeah. Before you start getting into mechanics. That, that yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. There, there are, that. That's all right. Yeah, there are some games that want you to do the stats before you come up with that. So I was just curious if there was a thought process to it. And for our viewers, by the way, this is page three of the character sheet. It actually is a linked form fillable process where as I type in our work in progress, it'll shunt it up to the character sheet, which I will show you guys later. So that's a great job on, and great thinking because lots of games could use that. Yeah, it was a, it was something that like I came up with a worksheet and I was like, why, if I have the worksheet, why don't I tag it into the character sheet and then people can just work straight there. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So... What are you thinking about making, Brandon? Um, I am going through and I'm, I'm learning uh, a bit about because we played with uh, firemen and I didn't know that that meant that they were people that was kill it with fire versus, uh, you know, that they had been a fireman b before. Oh, yeah. So when I'm looking at these roles, I'm seeing stats and skills associated with them. Uh, mm -hmm. Are those just generalized recommendations, or is there a, a reason for those associations? There's actually a reason for them. Uh, if you're looking at like the the character creation where it's talking about the individual archetypes, the reason why those stats are listed there are because those three stats that are listed, or two stats, or however many, are the stats that have the highest boost for choosing that archetype, right? So, the fireman, for example, the the stat list is fortitude, strength, and fighting skill. When we get to the actual crunch numbers, the stat numbers, those three in order, in that order, are going to be the ones that get the biggest boost. So strength will have the highest, or forge will have the highest boost in strength, and then fighting skill. So that's why those three, the top three are listed. And then the skills are, um, those are actually the just suggested skills that are in the archetype choice. So when you get to the skill points, you get to choose from the archetype skills. And these three are the primary ones, the two or three are the primary ones that we recommend for those characters. Gotcha. Um, and I know yeah. in the characters that we played, almost all of them had a primary and a secondary. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of them was like a, a double veteran or a double fireman or a double yeah. gunslinger or something it's like a that. a double gunslinger, I think, when you guys were playing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. What's and the point on that? So the idea is that the primary archetype is the first and primary way that your character learned to survive in the apocalypse, right? When things started going south, 
the character had some, either maybe it was some background training from before everything went south, or just because things went the way that they did, that person learned those things primarily. And then the secondary thing is is sort of an avenue in which the character is picking up skills or, or realizing, hey, I probably should have learned how to do these things, um, these special abilities. I've, I've, that's their, their choice focus area. Um, so when you're building the character, you determine, okay, what is the primary objective that they're, or primary way that they're going to survive? And then what other things, what other avenue do I want to pursue? Uh, so like the gunslinger, gunslinger idea behind that one is that the, the character is specifically just a gunslinger. No other options, just wanted to shoot the guns and sort of that way because it was their best way. Um, but sometimes you'll find things like a fireman medic or a fireman surgeon, rather, like a fireman who wanted to uh, also be able to help people and patch them up, right? So that kind of thing. So for me, I was looking at either making a scientist surgeon or a hunter thief. Uh, what about you, Scott, while Brandon's looking and thinking? Uh, you know, I didn't think about what I was going to create today. That's a good question. Well, I, none of us hmm. did. We came in carte blanche. Just uh, you know, I'm going to actually about. take a character that uh, I saw Abe play in a one shot of uh, After Zombies and kind of morph that that's uh aid smith and he was uh it was in a you know after zombie apocalypse and he had the original series star trek in his backpack in, on a hard drive and he was going to reconstruct society based on that and so i'm going to go with a priest mechanic um, okay. with with that uh that is you know trying to take that federation outlook and uh you know build a better world that reminds me of another one shot that we did where I literally was trying to rebuild, my character was trying to rebuild our society using the comic book that was in my bag that I had, if you remember. Okay. So that's uh, cool. I think, I think that I will, you know, I'm going to try to recreate, see if I can recreate with the new changes that we made, a character that was play tested. Um, not quite the same character, but there was a, a, a Ronin, uh, I can't remember the secondary one, so I'm just going to make it. I'm going to go with the Ronin veteran and see how that pans out. Uh, that's like a character that was... It was a Zulu warrior um, going with that uh, aspect, so I think I'm going to do something like that. Okay. Um, so that's what I think I'm going to do. See if I can make that. Okay. And you were what mechanic, Brandon? Uh, I am a priest mechanic. Okay. Sure. Then I'm going to go to my scientist surgeon. I'll, do, I'll go with that. So... We've all figured that out. Let's go to step one, and we figure okay. out our stats. Okay, yeah. So step one, you figure out your primary uh, your primary archetypes bonus. So after choosing what your character is, right, what you've decided to make a sneaky, stabby, techy, prey kind of thing or whatever, uh, then you go down to the the archetype bonus. So the stats uh, basically each archetype has a bonus and negative. Uh, like a positive and negative side to it. So you get a bonus in certain things and a negative in other things. Um, so basically, based on the type, the first primary archetype you chose, you'll go through and figure out if you get a plus 15 or a plus 20. It's going to be a plus 20 to something, a plus 15, a plus 10, a plus 5, and then you're going to have a minus 10 and a minus 5. That's how it's going to break down. Uh, things that you're strong at, things that you're weak at. Um, so for example, uh, being that I was choosing a Ronin, my... My primary one that I get 20 in is going to be my luck, right? Oh, mm -hmm. no, I read the wrong, sorry. Uh, is my should be my fighting skill. Yeah, it's my fighting skill. Um, so that's where I would put my 20. Awesome. For me, my primary archetype is going to be scientist. So I get a neg 10 to my strength, flat fortitude, neg 5 to my agility, 20 bonus to my int, 15, 5, oh, sorry, 15 instinct, five charisma, and ten luck, as viewers can see. What about you, Brandon? Uh, for being a priest, I'm uh, not quite as fast and definitely not very good at fighting, so it's a neg five agility and a neg ten to my fighting skill. But uh, my intelligence, insight, and charisma are all going up. Int by ten, ins um, uh, instinct, sorry. Instinct by fifteen and charisma by twenty. I'm nice. good at talking to people. Awesome. Cool. So do we go immediately to our secondary archetype for that stat now? Yep, yeah. So it's a quick jump. Right now you just jump next to the, the secondary archetype, which is the next chart. It's a little bit different. The secondary archetype doesn't have as big of a, of a 
pendulum swing that it does, that the primary archetype does. So you only have a you're gonna have a plus five or a plus ten, a plus five, and a minus five for your secondary archetype. Um, so the downside is you won't get as big of a bonus in an area, but you will not have as big of a negative in an area as well. Um, the the downside to doing like the gunslinger gunslinger double archetype thing is that your negative is going to be in the same places, right? You're not going to find the negative in a random place. Uh, okay. Yeah. So for example, my uh, secondary for the Ronin, I think it was veteran. Yeah, veteran's what I chose. Uh, so my plus five is going to be in fortitude. My negative five is going to be in intelligence, and my positive 10 is going to be in luck. For me, I'm choosing to be a surgeon for my secondary. So I'm gonna be even weaker in my strength by a negative five. My int's gonna go up by five more and my instinct is gonna go by 10. What about you, Brandon? I've got a neg five fortitude from mechanic, but a plus 10 to my int and a plus five to my instinct. So that worked out pretty well. Nice. Kind of focused in on some of the good things I'm good at. Yeah, and that's sort of what you're doing. You're like, okay, this is how I'm gonna make this character like rock. Um, yeah, so now that that's done, now we get to move on to the next thing about building the base stats, which is your personal apocalypse. So one thing you now have to think about, uh, now that we've reached this point where you're starting to create characters, is think about what apocalypse. There were so many apocalypses, but which one did your character specifically fight through and survive? Um, Can you give our viewers uh, a couple options on yeah. so that they get an idea? Yeah, I mean, so the primary ones that you'll find a lot of, coming up a lot are like Alien Invasion, uh, Nuclear Holocaust, uh, Robot Uprising, and Zombie Apocalypse. Those are like the four that we generally advertise because those are the four main ones that appear in that like board game as well. Um, but there are also things like Food Riots and Time Paradoxes and Supernatural Horrors, uh, which Supernatural Horrors also includes the Cthulhu Mythos Monsters. So that's something to note. They, they bridge the gap between Aliens and uh, Supernatural. So we have that thing happening. Uh, but you choose one of those, and based on whichever one it was that you survived, you're going to get positive boosts to some of your stats. There are no negative I'm, boosts for the apocalypses. I'm definitely looking at Alien Invasion with a, a Star Trek theme on my character. So yeah, that's uh, right. 5 to Agi, 10 to that in, instinct, and 5 to my ballistic skill. With the idea of being a scientist, I was thinking of playing with the robotics idea. So robot apocalypse sounds great i helped create our terminators that destroyed us right uh and i was thinking this you guys were thinking on um, different directions i was thinking of food uh being my thing because you know starving conditions and whatnot so i think i'm gonna go with the food riots uh which gives me a uh, five in fortitude and instinct and then a 10 in fighting skill which pushes up my fighting skill more awesome so. well what's next I'm going to type these in. Sure thing. Catch up to you guys. No problem. Um, all right. So then after that, the next thing you do is you figure out how old your character is. Now, this actually has a, an interesting effect. Not only are there positives and negatives based on the age bracket you've chosen, so like older characters are more frail, there's also this skill proficiency that happens. The older you are, the more you've just experienced stuff, so the more skills you have uh, or are proficient in. And so... Um, as you guys know, with proficiencies, you want as many as you can because then you don't have to roll disadvantage. So being older makes you easy, like it makes makes it so you have a lot more skills to utilize without disadvantage in the game. Well, given that I ha kind of had a Donald Sutherland um, picture in my head, maybe it was because of something we talked about earlier, Brandon. Um, I'm going to go with geriatric, sixty age sixty plus. Oh, that's okay. going to give you four of those skills. Yeah. Yes. Right. But so there's uh, there are four. Are terrible. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. There are, sorry. There are four stats that are specifically related to this. These are the survival survival stats: crafting, perception, survival, and tracking. And you have to choose from that list, and you can't double up. So so for you, you have all four of them. Um, later on, that you can have like you can increase it later on with other things that you choose. But right now, those are the four that you automatically start with proficiencies in. Is crafting a generalized crafting, or is it a specific, I craft this, I craft that? Yeah, it's specific to, so crafting specifically covers the items. Uh, it doesn't cover mechanical things or electrical things, and it doesn't cover uh, science equipment, but it covers things like armor, uh, some barriers, uh, tools, things like that. Those all fall under crafting. Gotcha. Um, yeah. But you don't have to pick what your specific craft is. It's just no, general no, it's... on that stuff. Okay. 
on this one, yeah, on this one, it, it specifically goes to the items. If you wanted to be crafty, like be able to to make uh, mechanical objects, then you'd have to choose mechanics, right? Yeah, it's like what I'm talking about is like in D20, uh, you know, you craft armor, craft weapons. Oh craft yeah, this, no, 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 craft no, that, the crafting so. is the whole that covers the whole yeah. group. All right, I'm looking at being uh, mature that, you know, I've been around long enough to know that Star Trek's a better way of life than where we are. So I'm going to get three of those skills, which I'm going to grab crafting, perception, and survival. Not, tracking didn't seem that important. Um, mm -hmm. Sacrifice five in strength and unfortunately five in charisma, because apparently as you get older, people listen to you less instead of more. Uh, but I pick up five int and five insight. Instinct. Yeah, instinct, yeah. Uh, and I'm just going to go with middle, and I'm just going to throw, I think, perception and crafting. Well, no, I'm going to do perception and tracking. And this middle has no mods. No mods, yeah. So middle's all, that one is just no changes. You're at the peak of your life, which in this case is between the ages of 30 and 45. I hear that? I still haven't middle. peaked. Uh, I heard that. Yep, I heard that. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that, you know, for my character, I have a great excuse to walk around with a, with a cool cane. <laughs> Which cane yeah. did you bring today? I don't know. It might be the stiletto or it might be the taser. So the interesting thing about being geriatric, by the way, is that you have a bonus to luck, right? You mm -hmm. have a plus 10 to your luck, which also is the same plus 10 you get for being a child. And the sort of joke that I was playing with is that if you've made it this far, you must be lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other way around, if you manage to you know, get past birthing, then you're lucky enough. <laughs> You'll get unlucky as time passes. Ah, so that's sort of the idea there. But Very So good. then we move on to development points, which is 100 points that we get to spend yep. uh, in any of these stats, right? But we Correct. can only pop 35 into a single one. Right. So you have 100 points to throw around, but you can only put 35 into one at a time. That way you can't like put all 100 into one stat. Okay. Well, I probably should pick up a little strength because right now my strength is a five. <laughs> oh, that's, that would be so terrible. Though it kind of would be funny. I mean, kind of would be funny. So, I mean, you have to have uh, you have to have a five as the minimum you can. Right. You can have less than that. Um, but if you left it that way, which I have seen, there was a playtester who wanted to push the limit, and he had a, a character that was like, I think he was a scientist, and he had a five in strength or fortitude or whatever, and he just kind of walked around pretending that he was gonna break at any moment. It's like, oh, oh, I can't pick that up. Oh my god, it was pretty funny. So, well, uh, for me, I'm looking at uh, staying focused. Thirty into my intelligence, thirty-five into both my instinct and my charisma. Let's let's bring those numbers up. Now is a great time to ask for our viewers' sakes: Would we be rounding up or down when we start doing the division for the totaling? You are going to run down. Cool. Yeah. So let's go. Let's see, seventy-five. I have got. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do this one. 10. 20. 20. 70. 5. 15. I think um, I figured out where I'm placing my 100 points. Uh, Ready when you guys are for that. I am. Cool. All right. I've got mine. Okay. So for me, I'm putting 20 points into strength. Actually, let me make that correction because fortitude seems better on that. I'm going to put 20 into fortitude and leave myself at a five strength. I, I, can, I can't lift much, but I ha I'm a hardy breed. I put 20 into my intelligence. I put 20 into my instinct, 20 into my charisma, and 20 into luck. I gotten by through being hardy, intelligent, and lucky. And I have a little bit of charm. What about you guys? Go ahead. Uh, okay. So I, uh, what I did is I put 10 into strength, uh, 15 into fortitude, and I'm, I'm doing that so I can pop up my build and try to get some extra damage. Uh, I did put 20 into agility because I feel like that's going to be necessary, at least at some point, for like initiative and stuff. Uh, then I put five into intelligence and ten into instinct, thirty into the fighting skill, obviously, because I'm trying to min max here a little bit, uh, and then ten into luck. So that's how I broke it down. Awesome. I already broke down where I put my stuff into, but it left me with twenty strength and fortitude, twenty five and agi, 
My int is up at 80. Instinct is 95. Charisma is 75. Fighting skill is a horrible 15. Ballistic skill at 30. And luck at the base 25 has never been modded. Okay. Well, for me, my two high stats are going to be int at a 90. And instinct is going to be an 80. So... While I start writing in um, all the divisions, Scott, why don't you tell us how we total things? Okay, so yeah, you're essentially just going to add all those numbers together. I mean, that's the simplicity of it. Uh, you're going to add all your numbers together, and that'll come out with a number. It's going to be between 5 and probably 100, depending on how well you built it. Um, you're probably not going to go over 100, but it doesn't really matter if you do, because that just changes how things work out later during dice rolling. Uh, so there's no there's no like character max where you can't have more than 100, but I I would like to see someone who made more who got more than 100 and didn't break a rule somewhere because I have managed to get a uh, character I think agility up to 100 but I've never been able to get past it. If we're um, able to spend three uh, 30 points, uh, you said we can do 30 points in each stack, correct? 35 is the 35 then i would legitimately be able to go to 105 int if i wanted to oh nice okay so there is a way to do it yes um i would have legit all right. legitimately spent all 35 then i wasn't trying hard enough to break my own system apparently but it's fine uh so yeah you just basically add up all those numbers and that's going to break into a number like 50 60 70 45 25 whatever it is uh, and then from there, you're gonna you want to figure out the half and quarter numbers on that because it will create these degrees of success, which are used for essentially all kinds of stuff for for not just opposed roles like they often are, but also for things like figuring out if you did better on something. Like if you're scavenging, you find more stuff, or if you went to craft something, you did a better job or faster job at crafting. Um, so that's the next thing you do. So first, you figure out the main core number, and then you divide it by two, and then divide it by four. And again, we emphasize that you will round down when it's halves. Correct. So when it's 45 and you have it, you go down to 22. Correct. Awesome. Yay. Trying to math out my numbers real fast. No problem. Bye -bye. Take your time. I am now going to zoom in on the character sheet so that we can see the proficiency section a little bit better for folks. Yeah, the, that's the one weakness of this, this uh, filled out character sheet is that the boxes are really small. So, well, I can zoom in, and therefore I can actually access it without the bing on the <laughs> on the error thingy. Cool. And I'm ready yeah, to Alice. Uh, I just went through and looked, and did, yeah, your your path specifically is one of the ones that you can break that hundred on. Mm -hmm. I looked because you you've got your twenty five and your thirty five, so you start at sixty effectively if you're choosing, and mm -hmm. so. Being a mech scientist gets you another thirty. That's you're up to ninety. Going for in the robotic. Um, wasteland is another 10 and then your being a geriatric brings you up to 110 if mm -hmm. you push it push all, it all into way. that yep that's a serious min max character then yeah yeah no no i just i immediately went back since you're saying i don't know if you can now you do have a note that uh on uh page 23 that uh base stats can be over 100 so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely i knew that and uh well, because oh go ahead scott I was going to say, because when you get to this number, this point where you're cracking them down and breaking them in half and quarters, that's where it comes in. Like having over 100 doesn't really mean anything to me. You're still going to fail if you roll a zero, 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 right? That's just automatic in the rules. But if you uh, have like a high number, like 110, then your your great success number is going to be decently high and your amazing success is going to be high as well. And so you're going to just be really good at that thing, just really yep. good. Uh, and that's just how it's going to break down. But given how during play you're able to get advantages, you're able to have people command you, stuff like that, the bonuses add up pretty well. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really seeing the need to really push that max. I felt going to 90 was a pretty good pretty good line on that. Though, yeah. you know, depends on next time I play if I want to go all the way. I mean, the uh, the major stat for this Ronin is, is, fighting, is, is the fighting skill, mm -hmm. which I have at 85. Um, the next yeah. highest one is the fortitude at 60, but you know, I'm okay with the 85 because that, that fortitude is going to join up and make the build bigger. And so that's what I really wanted anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay. So now when you get to the skill points, when you start getting to that point, you get to choose, uh, skills based on your character's archetype. So, well, first off, first off, I'm sorry. First off, you have to choose your combat skills. Everyone gets some combat skills, uh, and they can choose, whether it be archery, blades, brawl, clubs, firearms, or wrangle. Um, you can choose between those. The only one that doesn't appear on this list is heavy weapons. 
Maybe I should be a geriatric brawler. <laughs> the, the thing is you pick two of them. So you get to choose two types of combat skills. Mm -hmm. However, if you opt out of one, if you decide you don't want to get one, then you get to choose an extra regular like non-combat oriented skill from your list. There are a few uh, combat skills on in the character list. Like a fireman and Ronan both end up having blades in their list, which is a combat related skill. Uh, but it's uh so you could choose it as technically a non-combat related um so that's a way to like also mix it up to like twist it but there's really no point to do that i think i'm going to go with archery because mm -hmm. i have a decent you know it's not a great but it's a decent agility that i have so all proficiency in archery and i'm gonna go with firearms for my other one um, I'm in on firearms, and I'm going to avoid the second one um, to get the non-combat. Yeah. Uh, I think because I know that the Blades is going to pop up on the Ronin one, I think I'm actually going to go with uh, with Brawl and Clubs, so that way I can have all three of those fighting skill, uh, fighting stat, or skill uh, the fighting skill fighting skills, essentially. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. On second thought... And I'm going to just take firearms and save the other one because archery is not that big of a deal. Firearms seems much more in the character image I have. Yeah. And then you're going to become, so that makes you proficient in those skills um, so that you don't have disadvantage when you use them. Um, okay. And then now that you've done that, now that you chose your, your two fighting skills, what you're going to do is you're going to jump over to the, the archetype skill sets. So each archetype has seven skills in them or should have seven skills. I think one of them doesn't because it's special. Um, but then you get to choose four from your primary archetype and then three from your secondary archetype. Now, there's a note. If you are a scientist, uh, either as either your primary or secondary, when you come to make that choice, you can actually choose a skill again. Uh, no one else gets to choose a skill again. So they can't push it up. And when you choose it a second time, you push up your proficiency in it. So if you're, you choose, uh, say, let's look at the list. You choose academics, you can choose academics twice, and then you have academics at skilled rather than at proficient, which gives you a plus five to that, the use of that skill. Yeah, I actually wanted to take a quick moment to just explain proficiency on that for people. Oh, yeah. P will be your first level when you first become able to be proficient, which will be a flat statistic based on your actual base stat. At skilled, you get 5%. At T, for trained, you get 10% bonus. And at M, you get mastery, which uh, mastered gives you a 15% bonus on top of your base stat. So if I have a, and this mastery or trained or any percentage bonus, you add to your big first number, and it is equally divided with the others. So Correct. it is, uh, it works the same way on the division as anything else as you go up. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other thing. Skills. The other thing to note, too, is that you can, uh, so the only place where you get to, in character creation, get to double up on skills that you already have is this point. Uh, if you gained, like, the perception or survival or tracking or crafting from the age section, you can hit it again here at this point to put it up to skills. So you could start off as a skilled character and say crafting, in, uh, crafting, perception, survival, or tracking. Those are the four that you'll, you'll possibly start off with. And we get four from each of our... Uh, you get four from your primary and three from your secondary. Okay, and we get one extra from our primary if we gave up a, a, a combat, yep. right? Okay. Correct. Okay, so it does have to be from primary, which is fine. That's where I wanted it from. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to take Xenotech use. That sounds good. That sounds like I'm very jealous of it. And I'm going to rank up my academics to skilled because it is in my primary and my secondary option. Um, Wait, I thought we couldn't do that. I thought it was only based on age skills that we could do that. Oh, uh, she's a scientist, so she can do that as a scientist. Oh, uh, okay. Um, that's the one the one character that can do that, which is why it's special. Right. So for uh, academics, I can do skilled for that. And then yep. I'm going to go over to my charm and command. I'm going to grab proficiency in both of those. And give you guys bonuses when we're in combat. Command is a great ability, in my opinion. I like that one. So I picked my, my I picked all of mine at that point. I picked my four, uh, one, and three. Tracking. So Alice, what do you got? Okay, so at the end of all of that, I have skilled in academics. I have proficient in mechanics, proficient science, proficient tech use. My um, 
my crafting, perception, survival, and tracking from earlier step on proficient. Then I have proficient in xenotech use, proficient in charm, and proficient in command. That sounds pretty sweet. I went, I already had crafting, perception, and survival from my age. So I went with academics, charm, command, medicine, and science. Science being that one that I traded out a combat proficiency for. Uh, then from my mechanic, I went with crafting, which means that I have now leveled up my crafting. So I am skilled with it. Uh, mechanics and tech use. So, Alice, you and I probably should never play these characters together because we're we're checking off a lot of those same exact boxes. Yep, it sounds. I mean, and we're going to be like, you do this, and then you're like, well, now you tell me what to do, and then we're going to be like, <laughs> big bonus on nothing. <laughs> I mean, you know what though? Sometimes working out that way kind of makes it fun. We're, yes, you know. absolutely. Crafting out of nowhere. Uh, Two old people just telling each other what to do all the time, and <laughs> neither of them actually doing it. That's funny. Uh, I I actually so for the primary ones I chose blades, perception, stealth, and tracking. Um, I switched it at the one from age to survival, so it's fine. Uh, that was alright. That was totally what I wanted to do with my character. But then, like for the veteran, I was kind of stuck. I went with athletics because um, I have a good strength, so that's probably a good one for me to be proficient in. That way I can jump and run and do things like that. But then I ended up with drive, uh, interrogation, intimidate. And since my charisma is bad, it's it's okay. At least I won't have disadvantage when I try to interrogate somebody. And that, that's all right. Um, but uh, that's what I ended up going with. So the character can drive and run and you know track and survive. Um, but the only one I have skilled in is perception because I had it both from age and from the primary archetype. Cool. So, it's a good one to have. Yeah. So our next step will be choosing apocalypse skills, right? Yep. So then you do this again for the apocalypse. So we're doing this again. Uh, the downside is you you double you you can't double up on this one. So if you run into an apocalypse, like for example, uh, the robot uprising, if you already had tech use, you don't get to get it again, unfortunately. Um, which sort of forces you into choosing the thing called robotics, where you get advantage on your academics roles to know about robots and robotics stuff. Right, so or, that's sort of what ends up happening. Or what might happen is I can go back to the previous step and say, hmm, I guess I won't choose tech because I'll get tech next. Trick, I do that all the time when I'm making pre-gen characters. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll get to that step and go, you know what, I'm going to go back and switch out some skills. Yeah. Um, so I see fun. I see a few here that I don't see on the character sheet itself, like Xenology, uh, Monster Anatomy, Fallout. Yeah. So, so those are... So, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, those are the ones where you don't... It's not actually a skill. Um, what it is, if you read the next page, page 29, it explains those. Those are... All of them grant academics related to that subject. Uh, they grant uh, advantage to academics related to that subject. So, for example, Fallout grants you... Uh, uh, information about it gives you advantage on academics to know about radiation and it's right um okay. xenology that kind of thing so the idea being that if you already have the skill that's from your uh, from your your apocalypse then you just you just become better at knowing what happens or what what revolves around that apocalypse that's pretty cool um, yeah so, so I even if you and that way i can keep my tech use there you go. Uh, so the other side of it is like, say, for example, you don't have academics, right? You just, you're not proficient in it. So you have disadvantage when you roll academics. In this case, it would cancel it out and be like, well, yeah, I don't know a lot about a lot of stuff, but I do know about zombies that I know about. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a specialization. Yeah, essentially. Uh, and it's just, it's the avenue. There's only, I think, two or three. Let me double check. I think it's just two where there are two skills. Um, because like, uh, yeah, so it's time paradox and food right. Interestingly, those are both the ones that I came up with, and they are not; they don't exist anywhere in the game. Um, but there was no way to like have more knowledge about food. Like I just didn't know how to work that one out, so I went ahead and added a second skill in there for both of those. Agriculture, I guess. Uh, but what if your like your your history of your character is like, yeah, there were food rights because I lived in a city, and yep. you know, cities run out of food in about a week, so problems um yeah so that's that so you then you choose the skill there um i don't know what you guys chose you chose uh you chose tech use right yeah i chose the tech yeah, use I'll because i went it. back and i'm changed going with xenotech xenotech cool and uh i was doing uh food so i brawl or firearms i guess i'm picking up firearms because i already have brawl 
So there we go. My ballistic skills is entirely wasted. My 15 ballistic skill. It's going to be a rough day. Uh, all right. So then the next thing you do, now you've made all these numbers. Uh, now you get to go and sort of crunch the the secondary or the yeah the secondary stats the special stats. The derived uh, these stats. guys, hmm? the, the derived, derived stats. stats. Yes. Yep. So each of these uh, these sec these special stats are used for various different things like um, salvaging or like if you get hit with a poison things like that right. So they're the, your resilience, your build, your hit points. They're all derived from your base stats, and they all have a, a certain way of doing it. Like your build, which is really easy, it's written right there. People can see it at home. Uh, is from your thing. It's strength plus fortitude. Just add those two numbers together. So in my case is 110. Um, that's my build, and that's my build number. Mm, that's nice. And then, and then your uh, your resilience is going to be that as it's so it's a strength plus fortitude divided by two. If you were paying attention, it's basically your build divided by two, right? So the average of your two numbers, which in my case is 55. Should be easy math. And then the same thing happens for health points. It's your build number again divided by five. It's strength plus fortitude divided by five. Might be why I put them in this order. The worksheet. Uh, um, 22. Ah, oops, that's a mistake. Uh, and then your dodge. So the dodge is here, but it's going to be used as a defensive action. This is a derived stat. This is the only one of the defensive actions that's a derived uh, special stat that's that's based on your agility and your instinct. Um, you use that to avoid getting hit, as you guys know from playing the game. Mm -hmm. Yep. So 42... Is 45 and luck is 70. So and this is where we do a lot of basic math. Yep. Yeah, this is this math. is all math stuff. Yep. So this is where the majority of math happens right here in the game. Is right yes. at this point. And it's it's very basic. You know, the hardest thing you have to do is add two numbers together and divide by five or divide by right. two or divide by ten. So, you know, fortitude, my fortitude is forty-five, my luck is seventy, and that gives me a total of a hundred and fifteen. I divide that by uh, by two, it says. So 115 divided by two. So I need to fix that math. <laughs> so that's 57. So I have a really high salvage and a really high resolve. My initiative is a nine because my, uh, my luck is really high. So that actually helped me make up for some of the uh, lack of agility. So I end up with a build of 50, resilience of 25, health points of 10, dodge of 50, initiative of 9, luck use per game, I have 7. So that means I have 7 times where I get to reroll my stuff. Then salvage of 75, resolve of 85, and immunity of 57. What about you guys? Uh, so I have a build of 110, as I said before, and then a resilience of 55 and a health points of 22. Um, that's essentially where I have the majority of my numbers because after that, my dodge is 45. I have an initiative of eight. I only have four luck use per game. My salvage is 42, which is less than half. My resolve is even worse. It's 35, but my immunity is 50. So I have a 50 chance of not getting infected with the Z virus or radiation or something. Anyway, um, but that's where my numbers are. So, uh... Mine are going to be pretty similar to Alice's, but, uh, you know, other than, uh, salvage and resolve, it's just seems pretty terrible <laughs> i know i felt that way but you know what that means scott gets to be put in front of us and he'll he'll block all the shrapnel for me i'm lucky that way i'm lucky yeah i mean way. to be fair yes to be fair uh my build at 110 means i get a dc mod plus one right the damage code for my melee attacks goes up by one so when it comes to something like if i'm using the katana or like a big sword or something my number, my my uh, number for that is going to be like two d six plus three. Okay. Right, so I'm I'm going to be smashing things a lot faster than you guys will be, and that's that's the primary point of this character is to smash things as fast yeah. as possible. So after that, then we go to special abilities for each of our yep. archetypes, right? Yes. Yeah, so so what you do? That. So yeah. So when you go now, you go now to making to getting your special abilities, which are you know cool things your character does based on the archetype. Now starting off. You only get to choose from your primary archetype list. You don't get to choose from your secondary. But during character development, there are ways to obtain the secondary archetype 
uh, special abilities. So that's that's between you and your character development with your XP later on. But starting off, you choose one from your character's archetype. Um, and they all do some cool effect. They either affect how you, they give you like advantage on stuff, or they affect how you handle things, or uh, maybe they allow you to make certain movements or certain actions differently than you would have normally. Um, so a perfect example of that is, uh, for me, my second one on, on the Ronin list is uh, Duelist. And I what I do with that one is it, it gives me the ability to declare an opponent, and until that comp the opponent dies or leaves combat, I gain six initiative. That's a pretty cool effect. So my initiative of eight becomes 14 basically every combat when I just go, okay, that person, that's my person. Um, right? And then at the end of the combat, if that person's dead or whatever. I mean, maybe I kill that person real fast, and then I don't, then I don't have that initiative anymore. Don't hurt that one. Don't hurt <laughs> that one. Uh, but yeah, so they all have a different effect. Uh, I think I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to put on this one the War Cry special ability uh, for the run in, which allows me to uh, attack all the enemies within short range with a resolve attack that, uh, upon which if they fail, they get the unnerved condition for. So they get a condition that means they have disadvantage on all of their role for 1d4 combat rounds because I shouted at them. Um, and I can do that again after four combat rounds or whatever. It's so. the it's the offensive you, uh, version of command where command is used on allies. That's the offensive combat use version. Yep. Cool. Yeah, the reverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to choose chemical reaction and make chemical bombs and stink bombs. That works very well uh, with the, uh, the being geriatric. Well, I'm a geriatric uh, guy. I don't really want to go. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I'm going to take Blessing, which uh, I make a resolve roll, which I don't think I'm terrible at. I'm an 87 on uh, resolves to grant a special benefit, Damn. one of which can be protection from all physical damage to a character within close range. So by remembering different events that have occurred in Star Trek and such, I can advise people. And uh, basically, they get to keep their head down during, it, during uh, bad yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. You just that that one person for that one action phase get, takes no damage. So, so you give it to like you give it to me, and then I run in and like smack the thing yep. real hard, and I don't have to worry about getting hit. So you know? you know, since we get two actions, my first one is run up there and hit them, and the second is don't get hurt while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. And then we we have another one that is based on um, our personal apocalypse, right? Yep, so now you get to choose. Now that you've chosen your archetype special ability, you choose the, a special ability that you got from your apocalypse. Well, um, um, I've gone from an image of, like, Donald Sutherland to the um, the doctor from uh, Back to the Future. Doc Brown? <laughs> Doc Brown, thank you. Because... That, that is who uh, I, I played uh, when you ran. That's the yeah. non-recorded game, basically. The, the reason... The reason for that is because I'm going to take exposed wiring, wiring, which reroll any failed resistance rolls against electricity-based damage, including from knockout weaponry without using luck. The outcome of the second roll must be accepted. So now I'm just picturing from that white hair, that white hair going... Now I have a question I for you. I don't mind because... electricity. Yeah. And Alice, I think that's part of it. You probably started out more as Donald Sutherland. And then the apocalypse happened, and then you survived past that, and you just kind of became more into Doc Brown yeah. as, as time went on. I think that's part of the way things work. Seems good. Um, for the blessing where you're making the resolve roll, is there a benefit to getting a, uh, a great success or anything like that? Uh, not in this particular case. This one, you just have to succeed on the roll. Uh, let me double check. There might be... Sorry, I'm just going to look over real fast, because there might be some benefit. I'm just wondering because uh, from yes. the... So oh. there, w one of the options, the option to reduce the stages of infection, that's based on your degree of success. Oh, awesome. Then yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to, instead of taking Sixth Sense, which prevents me from basically being ambushed, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take Mental Parry, which means I re roll my resolve with advantage. So that 87%, I get to throw an extra set of the, the tens digit die. And uh, hope to come up low, so therefore I'd get more. Yeah. I went with uh, Anarchist from the Food Riots because uh, I'm already using that. If I jump in a short range and I can attack everybody with a war cry, 
Uh, the the anarchist ability gives me advantage on all my defensive action when I'm fighting more than one opponent within short range. So essentially, I'm going to try to jump into crowds anyway and try to use the war cry. Mm -hmm. So now I'll also get advantage on my defensive actions while I'm there. I'm so I'm nice. seeing an old Diablo two barbarian style. That's yeah. exactly what I'm seeing. Ooh! Next, he's going to tell us he's going to start popping potions out of bodies. I mean, <laughs> craft, craft uh, right. potions with the blood, apparently. <laughs> uh, now the last, well, it's not the last phase. It's just the uh, the next thing you do is you're going to choose the uh, lucky mutation. So everyone has survived thus far in the apocalypse because they had some special reason, right? They've gone through these apocalypses. And the idea here is that you've mutated some, something has mutated within you or you just had that special mutation when you were living and that's why you managed to get through so far. Um, so you get to pick one or you can roll one on the chart here and there's there's 10. Uh, but there are things like healthy immunity where you get advantage in all rolls or thick-headed where you get advantage in all resolve rolls um, or like fleet-footed where you can make a movement action as a free action, that kind of stuff. I've already so, made mine. <laughs> it, I'm assuming there's no benefit to getting advantage twice because I do have the option with thick-headed to get uh, advantage on all resolve rolls. There is. There actually, there actually is stacking advantage in max. So when you oh, get okay, so I'd throw three v tens and then pick the no. best. No, you get five no. percent more. Yeah. So when you stack oh. advantage in this game, you get to add an additional five percent on top. So. Gotcha. If you did that, you're essentially pushing it. You said it was 87 or 87, something. Like that as well. so it'd be 92. Yeah, you push it up to 92. Supposing that there wasn't some reason why you were at disadvantage for that in shock or whatever. Yeah. Um, so if there wasn't a, a disadvantage modifier at that time when you went to roll it, you'd be rolling it in. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think I'm probably going to take moving target because that plus one initiative will give me a new action. So I'll have an initiative of six, which means I get to go twice. Ooh. Probably the last person to go both rounds, but I get to go twice. Yep. Nice. Now, I, I'm i actually choosing to go with the uh, giant genetic to make the character bigger, uh, because now I think I am going to go that route of jumping into the things and just be the barbarian. So with giant genetics, I add 50 to my build, so my build now becomes 160, which changes my... Um, uh, it's not. It doesn't change my resilience, because that doesn't affect those numbers, right? Which is why right. it's a difference between saying just Resilient. build... Resilience is strength and fortitude. Yes. Yes. And so, but it will affect uh, some of the other things that happen. Um, my phone's ringing. No problem. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to do that. And that's really what it's going to affect is my uh, DC modifier. So that's going to go up to another one. So I'm going to be giving plus two. So my, my damage is going to be super high. Awesome. Ooh, my goal. I yeah. could get psychic powers. Yeah, you could. And that is one of the things. One of the options, uh, number six on the roll list, is the in the middle there. It's psychic powers. You gain a psychic power, which is the next page. This old chart of psychic powers. Um, now, here's the downside. If you take a psychic power, you have you get disadvantage on resolve rolls, uh, unless unless you happen to have survived the alien invasion and you have mental parry, because mental parry specifically states you're not at disadvantage when you have a psychic power. So. You... Oh, I definitely have to get Star Trek Psychics then. Forget yeah. moving target. I'll only go once. <laughs> the other the other side effect, though, is that you do have distrust from your non-psychic allies, you know, just because they're like, what is the psychic power? And what all that distrust is, is it just increases the success requirement for teamwork. So if we both try to, like, fix a thing together, or we both try to do a thing together, where you roll and give me a plus five or whatever, we got to get, like, a you got to get, like, a great success or higher for those things that happen, because we just don't trust each other. Or at least I don't trust you. <laughs> like... Um, I'm just looking through some of these options. Well, psychophysiology gives you a plus five to initiative. You have to increase your hunger, though. That's the trade-off. Yeah. Uh, you guys haven't, in the playtest so far, haven't encountered hunger or damage. Damage, to be fair, is more of a campaign-specific thing. Um, but when you start taking enough hunger damage, you start you start to like have problems, and you have, you know, you get disadvantage on your rolls, or you know, you just you just can't really do stuff. You're negative ten, things like that. Um, you basically start dying. Mm -hmm. So in one shots, it's probably totally fine to have that one. Uh, in but in campaigns, it's going to get iffy. So after that, we get to choose our negative traits. So this is an optional selection. Um, 
the uh, the negative traits. So so technically, your character description comes first, uh, where you get to choose the character. Uh, but like the stuff about the character, maybe they're, you know, whatever they're, have black hair and they you know wear baggy clothes or something. Um, that's all up to you. But then you get to choose a negative trait. It's an optional thing where you choose a negative trait, which is for role playing purposes mostly, but. It also does grant you a mechanical benefit where you get another skill proficiency. Um, or you can increase the skill proficiency you already have in something. So I'm definitely choosing one. Given the image that it has morphed into, I'm taking bad volume control. Myself, with my self-hearing issues, at the beginning of our scenario, we get a plus 10 to noise because of me. Because I can't figure out inside voice, inside room voice, or outside voice. Is that what that symbol is? Is the the noise? Because I was like thinking yeah. that it's a it's a, a cupcake. <laughs> it kind of yeah. looks like a cupcake. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, I think it'll be fine when it's printed out. But that's actually the monster I from the board game. We decided to pull the icons from the board game to link the RPG and the board game together a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is actually the monster spawn icon. Uh, so it's the icon now for the EAG, the enemy attraction gauge. Uh, it is the the thing that we track to figure out if you get attacked randomly or you know. Stuff happens. Um, and it can be used to trigger effects in the game. Or so uh, that's what the little monster icon is here. Awesome. Um, so. so I'm going to increase my crafting to specialized, in, uh, to skilled, sorry, to skilled um, with that bad volume control bonus that I get. So what about you guys? Are you guys going to take one or just skip? Uh, I'm going to take Nightmares. That uh, I, not only is there the, the wondrous uh, parts of the universe out there, but there's also the horrific parts of uh, the universe. And that's going to make me make resolve checks to stay asleep. Yep. Uh, failure uh, means that I sc wake up screaming and we generate 10 noise and I don't really rest. Now, luckily, my resolve is really good and I have advantage on it. So hopefully the, I, I don't wake up screaming too many nights. That's true. And, I know that sounds totally power gaming, and it is. <laughs> it is. It is to an extent, yes. Uh, what are you going to do with that benefit? You um, I'm going back and looking at my skills. Um, probably take um, get a bonus in charm or command. Um, looking at those and just looking through the rest of the skill lists. But that's what I'm thinking. One of those two. One of those social aspects. So, yeah, let's go with command. I mean, I'm debating. I don't think this character needs one, but if I wanted to have one, I would probably... I don't know. I'd probably choose something like speech impediment and just make the character just silent all the time. It's basically the same effect as distrust, um, but I gain advantage on perception rolls because I listen a lot and pay attention a lot uh, more than I speak, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like a um, thing. And then I... Yeah. But I, I think I'm going to just hold off on it. Just think about it. See if so, I finally choose it. So before we move into the next step, I want to bring something up. Mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of games, you are micromanaging what your gear is. And so a lot of times when we're doing character creation, we skip gear. In this, they really do package gear for quick selection and quick creation for the starting gear uh, by using a bug out system. So why don't you tell us a bit about that, Scott? Okay. Uh, well, if I was going to be honest, this was actually one of the ideas that came from Todd at the Rock Manor Games Group. Uh, Todd, it was one of Todd's ideas. He had a couple of really good ones that, that made it into the final cut because they were just too good to like let go. Uh, but essentially, the way that the bug out method works is that you get to choose uh, between four or five options on each uh, category of kits, essentially, like each category. And you choose that kit is part of your bug out bag that you had, right? So for example, the first one would be armor. And you've got four options to choose for the kind of armor that you have. Uh, trick, they all come out to the same amount. So there's going to be no difference between them as far as the amount goes, if you were like power gaming. But it's it begins to create an effect. Where it really comes in is when you get to your weapons and gear. Um, those are going to be much faster. And so you essentially choose which of these loadouts, these, these bug out methods um, that you had set up for yourself. And you get to choose, like I said, one from each. And then you have free points to, to sort of cha add a few things here or maybe, you know, put some more armor on or something like that. Um, you know, or get some more food because you're like, oh, man, I need some food and I don't have any. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah. I like this because, you know, it 
allows people to be a little quicker on character creation for uh, for gear because in D and D we have the idea of SAG and some GMs will let you just write SAG standard adventuring gear and then what and if they trust and know you to always have certain things, you know, it's not a big deal. But it can be, you know, one of the longest portions of character creation by all means. So I like the idea that this just go option one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you're done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's still the option uh, under the free method if you decide to do that or if your your game master wants you to do that, where you go through, you have 112 CP, 112 component pieces, and you just choose the items based on their cost. Um, this number may actually change. I said 112, but this may change because we, we changed some of the prices of things. And so I may have to, there still connects. But um, but essentially you then go through and you choose each individual item. And you're, but for just like a quick, like, I want to play this game. Let's do this. You can just grab your, your things. You're like that, 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 and that. Now I'm good to go. Yep. So for me, I'm choosing option four, which is going to be, uh, camo jacket, which is three armor, gloves for two armor, and hat for one armor. With uh, Scott mentioning that they do the exact same thing, if I chose option one, it would be Nomex Kev Kevlar, which is armor six in one piece. I chose to break it down into those three pieces. For a weapon, I'm going to choose a handgun kit, which gives me a nine mil auto with quick draw holster and two ammo rounds. And then for the gear kits, I'm choosing the hoarder's kit. Which is a lot of little Did things. Did you steal everything out of my gear? Because you just listed exactly my choices. <laughs> uh, well, you know, with the way that I like to craft things and the way that I like to be resourceful, I was picturing, like, I could do a lot of things with all these little tiny things. Like, you know, the alcohol plus wool socks and all these other little things. Plus, I have a few food units out of that. But it sounds like you and I got the same things, Brandon. We, we ended up uh, starting in a, a slightly different way, and we have made so many of the, the same decisions on our path. The one thing the one thing to pay attention to that sounds awesome, because it is, but you do have a maximum amount of stuff you can carry without becoming encumbered. So that is something to consider. Um, again, I'll, I'm gonna, I have to math these out before the product comes out because they change, we change prices on stuff. But... If this, this hoarder's kit, which has so much stuff, is actually higher than your build plus 200, then you are encumbered. You're sort of weighed down by the amount of stuff you have. Um, well, that, that's why I find the uh, the young scrappy guy and tell him to carry it for me. Because, you know, yes, I, that is an option. Because I'm, I'm, very, I'm very weak. I'm well aware of that. But that's why I'm like, uh, youngling, you go get my bag over there. Come on, veteran yeah. Ronan. You know you want toilet paper. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the other side to that is that it is the, so this one specifically, this is the hoarder's kit. You're probably not carrying around all this stuff. You probably have it, mm -hmm. you know, stashed away, squirreled away in some hole somewhere and you go back to it every time. But that's where like, that's where vehicles come in because each cargo space can carry up to 500, uh, CP of stuff as one unit, right? As a cargo space. Uh, you have backpacks, you have things like that. So that's how you offset it. You can try to like, okay, I'm, we're going to put all this in the van that barely runs, but at least it carries our stuff. And the yeah. backpack can carry like 50, as I remembered, or something. 100. You can carry 100. See? I'm okay. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. You'll you? probably be all right. Starting out, you'll probably be okay. It's when you start adding more to that. Yep. That you problems. Well, what about you, Scott? What are you going to uh, choose for gear? Well, I was sort of thinking that I would go with option two, just to break it up a little bit, like you were saying. Uh, not too much, but like a hat and some armor. So I was thinking, you know, a big stop sign for armor or something, uh, taped to my chest with duct tape or something. And then... Uh, you know, some kind of hat protecting my head from the sun. And then, uh, obviously, I went with the melee kit because that's where my character shines. And so I'm going with, like, the katana, the hatchets, the combat axe, and the baseball bat. Um, and then I, I think that I was just going to go ahead and go with the uh, the scavengers kit. It sounds the best to me because it's got some flashlights and stuff in there that I can use. And more uh, weapons. Me. It's got a combat knife. And, and it has another combat knife in there. So I've got, like, double combat. I've got double everything except for the katana. I only have one of those. Um, but the upside is I can dual wield, which is an option, right? Mm -hmm. I can use both of my hatches at the same time or both of my common knives at the same time if I wanted to and thus get an extra uh, multi-attack option, but I, I get disadvantage on the second attack. But at least I have the option to attack twice. Now, I have a very important question for you. Have you licked your batteries to make sure that they are viable or, and not dead? <laughs> I mean, if my lithium ion battery isn't working right now, it's fine. I've got the mechanically powered low light flashlight, so I can just crank it up and light. Yeah. Um, so there's that. 
And if I were creative enough, I'm, it might ask you guys to figure out a way to take that that juicer, the the process to make my flashlight work and use it so I can charge my lithium battery, you know, rewire it, charge that. To do a cyclic cha- charging system. One of the things you can do with the rules in Maximum Pocket. Yep. So, uh, and I that- mean, and now... And now that's it. That's the whole character creation. That's that's you've got your character now. Awesome. Well, thank you all for watching this Maximum Apocalypse character creation for the prototype, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye, everyone. <laughs>